Okay, so we're going to continue our topic on matter, and I just want to start off with reviewing our unit essential question, which is, how has the scientific view of the nature of matter shaped our perceptions and understandings of so many things on Earth and in our universe over time? So for the last uh, couple of weeks now, we've been looking at matter, and we've talked about uh, the states of matter, what matter is, and now we're going to continue our learning on describing matter uh, through different ways. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. And we gave the example and we talked about whether or not light is an example of matter. Um, matter can have many different properties or characteristics. These properties and characteristics are used to classify matter in much the same way that the characteristics of living things are used to classify organisms. And chemistry, what we're going to be studying for the next several weeks, is the study of the properties of matter and how matter changes. So our standard um, is to distinguish between physical and chemical properties and when we look at the word distinguish, it means to use our senses to detect differences um, between two or more things. So when you see the lemon and strawberry here, how would you distinguish between the two? What are some things that make them different? Physical and chemical properties. Every form of matter has two kinds of properties. They can either be physical or chemical. Physical and chemical properties are used to classify substances. In other words, we can categorize substances by their properties. A physical property is a characteristic of a pure substance that can be observed without changing it into another substance. Uh, some examples include the boiling and freezing points, the hardness, the texture, the color, solubility, state of matter, flexibility, magnetism, conductivity, shininess, and malleability. Some other physical properties are volume, mass, and weight, and we can sense these properties with touch, taste, smell, and sight, and we can also measure them with balances, graduated cylinders, and scales. Okay, so um, we have some sugar cubes here, and I want you to name at least two physical properties of the sugar cubes. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video, and then when you resume, we'll look over the answers. All right, so some physical properties that you could have uh, included were that uh, sugar cubes are solids, uh, they're white, and they're soft. Another way to describe matter is by looking at the density of an, of an object or substance. And density is the measure of how tightly packed um, matter is in an object. Uh, when you find that something has a less density than water, for instance this cork, it tends to float. And then if something's more dense than water, it will sink. Think about those toys that you used to put in the bathtub when you were younger. If you want to find out more information about density, um, I've included a QR code. And if you download a QR reader to your smart, uh, smartphone or tablet, uh, this link will take you to even more information on density. So continue on with measuring matter, besides density, we can also look at um, the object's mass by itself, we can look at weight, we can look at volume. So mass is the amount of matter in an object, as we've discussed before. Uh, then there's weight, which is different than mass. Sometimes it's often confused with mass, but we'll, we'll get into the differences later on. Uh, but for now, what you need to know is that weight is the amount of uh, gravitational force on an object, or the amount of force on an object due to gravity. And then there's volume, the amount of space, another topic we've talked about. Um, 
uh, the amount of space that something takes up. Density is just the ratio of the mass to the volume. So here we have the formula for density and oftentimes we like to use this triangle here. Density is mass, we have this bar line, horizontal bar line, divided by volume and we can use this triangle to help us remember the three different formulas. In some cases we may be looking for density, other cases we may be looking for the mass, and then there will be other cases where we're looking for the volume. Uh, so we use this triangle to help us uh, solve the uh, mathematical problems when we're looking at density. Water has a density of one gram per milliliter. Substances that have densities of less than one gram per milliliter will float in water. Substances that have densities more than one gram per milliliter will sink in water. Uh, this same rule is true for the relative densities of other liquids. The density of a substance is calculated again by dividing the mass by the volume. Here I have um, a video on how to calculate density. I highly recommend that you watch this video over and over when you are practicing density problems uh, either between home and school. Uh, you just have to look for dose of science and the topic is calculating density. This is a real thorough description of how to use the formula depending on what it is we're looking for. And then we have um, Craig Ryson, who also wants to share uh, a couple tricks on how to use the formula for calculating density. Some great ways to remember um, how to set up the formula. So I also recommend this video. Um, again, that's Craig Ryson on calculating density. And these videos are both on YouTube. Now, we talked about physical properties, we're going to look at chemical properties. And chemical properties are the properties of a pure substance that describes its ability to change into another substance. So it hasn't changed already, we just know that it has the potential to do so. So some examples would be flammability, conductivity, um, which is the ability to burn, um, and reactivity with other substances. So um, some substances will react with some things and not with others. For example, iron, which is known by the chemical symbol Fe, will react with oxygen, chemical symbol O, in the, um, in the air to form rust. Gold will not um, react with oxygen, which is a property of gold or chemical property of gold. Now, what are the differences between physical and chemical properties summed up? I found uh, just another video for you, um, which pretty much summarizes, and it's by Education Portal, um, uh, the differences between physical and chemical properties. You don't need to watch the whole thing. I recommend that you end it at 4 minutes and 15 seconds. But I do want to summarize the video for you. And so here's my visual of the video and everything around us is matter if you just look around you um, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space as we've said before and uh, when you look at a quarter um, some of its properties is that it's a metal we can see that it's shiny you can see that it's silver um, and it's more dense than water in other words if i throw it into um, the fountain at a park it's going to sink to the bottom so we know it's more dense than water so these are known as physical properties this is these are things that we can observe or measure and it doesn't change the chemical composition of what that object is it's still a quarter other physical properties as I said earlier um, and based on Kristen Bourne's video we have volume, boiling point, temperature, color, smell, mass. Now let's look at another example. We have the car, which is also metal, just like the quarter. Um, it's malleable, which means that the metal can bend. 
and it's also more dense than water. So if a, a car drops into a body of water, it's not going to float on the top. It's going to sink instead. So um, let's say give it 10 years or so. After about 10 years, what you'll notice is that rust is forming. And rust is the exposure of the iron to oxygen. And this is an example of a chemical property. It's not something that we have seen immediately. Over time, once elements mixed, this was the end result. So when you have chemical properties, um, the key here is that you'll see a new substance, and that new substance means that, that it has new or different properties than its individual parts. So properties of iron and properties of oxygen will be different than the properties of rust. Now, uh, changes, chemical properties are pretty much the changes uh, that can uh, affect the chemical composition of a substance. Hasn't already undergone that, but we know it has the potential to. So um, other chemical properties are that uh, some substances can react, react with water, some can react with acid, react with oxygen. You can look at the pH and again flammability. All of these are chemical properties. So this is a, a summary of, again, Kristen Bourne's video that you just saw previously on this slide here on matter, physical, and chemical properties. So I do highly recommend that you watch this brief video just to see that summary again. All right, so what must you do to observe the chemical properties of a substance? Why don't you pause, think about it, and resume the video. All right, uh, you must try to change that substance is the answer to the question. So in order to uh, observe chemical properties, you have got, you, you're going to need to manipulate the substance and see how it reacts with other things in order to discover what those properties are. Okay, so let's just go back to the essential question. Now, after looking at the differences and being able to tell the differences between physical um, properties and chemical properties, how does this new knowledge shape your perception and understanding of how we understand um, the concept of matter on Earth. Okay, so as I bring this video to a close, just wanted to end off with a cup, uh, one just one question. How would you describe these objects to another student? So we have tomatoes, a book, and a tire. How would you describe these objects by looking at physical and chemical properties. Thanks for watching.